Welcome back, everybody. You already know that grill stays hot because we're back for more Tariko Unveiled. Today, I decided to start a new list of videos for Tariko. Today, we start the series on how powerful are the gods of Tariko, the eight kings. First, what is a god? In monotheistic and certain other religions, a god is a superhuman being or spirit worship as having power over nature or human fortunes, a deity or even supreme being. In modern mythology, we have Jormander, the world serpent, Quetzalcoatl, the fettered serpent from Aztec lore, or things like the Kraken and so on and so forth. Long in mankind's history, there are records of worship, praise, and sacrifice to these beings, making them truly what we would call gods. And with this series of videos, the eight creatures we have are in no short true gods. First off, let's talk about scale before anything. All of the eight kings, exception of a couple, are kaiju-sized creatures. To even remotely not be in constant states of war, the Tariko planet automatically has to be 70% larger than our own. These creatures that make Godzilla Kong or Ghidorah look like Chihuahuas are very much so literal forces of nature. Their very presence in an area and the mood they were in at the time can influence an environment's entire future, giving it fertile land or barren disaster. When creatures of this scale meet, a massive weather phenomenon occurs known as the Emperor Wind. These cloud formations span continents in the worst cases and in some cases can nearly become planetary. Each of the eight kings not only possess strength beyond literal comprehension, but access to unique traits of their biology, many being capable of warping reality, destroying minds and even the planet. For our first eight king, I chose to begin with my favorite and the master of the second largest continent in the gourmet world, Area 7. Enter the Monkey King Bambina. Area 7 is home to Bambina and the subjects of his kingdom, an innumerable species of intelligent, fantastical, and powerful primates. Over time, the strongest of these apes subjugated the rest of the population under a merciless cash system designed to funnel Area 7's food to themselves, despite the wealth of the resources on the continent. Outside of Area 4, Area 7 has the greatest land mass on the Tariko Earth, boasting an incredible 840 million square kilometers. Wait, yep, 840 million square kilometers. That's 340,325,813 miles, which... I don't know, maybe they added a zero, maybe they accounted for the underground and upper levels. I don't know, the continent's massive. Within Area 7, Bambina reigns supreme. Mentioned in the manga, his ancestors have for years lived and ruled the Monkey Kingdom, which itself has been home to other species like humans or Nitro. The area also contains some of the world's largest wildlife. Nearly all flora and fauna are absolutely titanic in size, such that humans seem like ants in comparison. The continent's trees are so large they pierce the clouds above, and even relatively small insects of Area 7 are even larger than the dense shark which had a body length of 2 kilometers. Area 7 is known as the Mountain Continent because of it having over 70% of its land area consistent mountain range. The area is politically separated into quadrants, each ruled by one of the four mighty Indu masters that all rank at the top of the caste system, with 100G Mountain at the very center where Bambina lived. Over time, the strongest of these primates subjugated the rest of the population under a merciless caste system designed once again to fuel all food and resources to themselves. The primates of Area 7 tend to have varied levels of intelligence, with some being no different than wild animals, while others are smart enough to be able to craft simple items such as weapons, tools, cigars, clothes, and musical instruments. I don't know, maybe they, maybe they buy them off of someone. And even hold festivals and follow the social system established by the monkey which is Inbu. Inbu, also known as monkey dance, is a form of martial arts discipline as well as a form of ranking system that is unique to the inhabitants of Area 7. Because of Area 7's unusual laws regarding indiscriminate predation, the ways of Inbu allow the primate inhabitants of Area 7 to become disciplined, thereby allowing them to become stronger as they progress through the ranks of Inbu. Like modern day martial artists, the ways of Inbus have a pyramid chain which shows the rankings of each group as how many there are with newcomers having the lowest ranking and usually consisting of the largest group with the instructors having the highest ranking with the smallest group. 
consisting in this case of only four. The Monkey King Bambina stands as an individual above this pyramid as the master of Enbu. The monkey art known as Enbu during ancient times was not seen as a form of combat, but as a beautiful dancing performance, which is performed by the Monkey King and those who can match the king's power, aka his lover, it's really a dance of play. The murals depicted within the ancient ruins of Area 7 show that the origin of Enbu's alias, the monkey dance, was due to the fact that Enbu itself was a dance with a set of forms that are performed in order to appease the Monkey King. The dance consists of up to a thousand different forms, which are all linked to an inevitable finale. With the Monkey King being the most powerful being in all of Area 7, it can perform the thousand form monkey dance within 10 seconds. From start to finish, though eventually, Enbu deviated from its original purpose and became a martial arts style as opposed to a dance. Now, with explanations and expos out of the way, let's talk about the applications and usages of Enbu. Enbu, in my opinion, is eerily similar to Ultra Instinct. Couple differences. Off the bat, Enbu's way more explained because Dragon Ball Z never actually explains its power scaling, but Anyway, Enbu uses power from every single cell within the body with up to nearly 60 trillion cells in one's body working in unison in order to launch attacks and move and defend and even aid bodily functions. Each cell's individual energy combines to perform a single action with immense amounts of energies being the release output. The way of Enbu is no simple matter as it is based around working with the body as a whole. This unison of the body must be performed on a cellular level, meaning that in order to master Enbu, every single cell within an individual's body must cooperate together and put aside the differing emotions and thoughts and urges which separate them from each other. Fear, doubt, hate, anger, hunger, joy, it doesn't matter. To utilize Enbu, you must be perfectly in unison to execute actions. One of the biggest emotions that a single individual will feel, that all parts of the body will feel, is fear. And going further on that, the fear of death itself. Because death itself means that all cells in the body will not survive, as bodies eventually rot. All cells within the body will feel a unified fear of death itself. Therefore, every single cell in the body will cooperate as they all have one single thought in their minds, survival. It is said that every creature at the brink of death will eventually feel unison with every single cell in their bodies as the body will attempt to survive. This means that if all cells work together, the chances of surviving can increase, and with Enbu itself, one can practice and even master the unison of cells so they can work together with any task performed. An example of the strict hierarchy of Enbu is when Tariko and the group made landfall in Area 7 and were attacked by a large group of monkeys. In this very first encounter against these monkeys, we see that not only can they resist the death sound, they possess high regenerative speeds and one even managed to redirect Tariko's Kuji punch. This group of monkeys actually had the four kings pressed until the leader of the area appeared and every single monkey bowed. Bowed to their master. Eh, Frieza? Frieza would probably like this. Later on, we see this group of monkeys dead and planted head first into the ground in an act of mass suicide. Again, yeah, Frieza would probably love this. They did so because when they attacked the group of gourmet hunters, this group of novice level primates broke the rule of the continent. No indiscriminate predation. You are not allowed to feed without permission. Here's where I mentioned in the Coco video that without Coco's fast thinking, half the group would have been killed and Bambina would have simply toyed with them and the anime would have been named Sunny not Tariko. This crushing defeat forces the Heavenly Kings to retreat and finally begin the process of learning Embu. The truth behind their defeat is that they were like kittens trying to have a fun, playful fight with a full-grown tiger. To practice Enbu, it may seem simple at first, juggle any number of BB pill bugs. However, the pill bug is an organism that at any moment can change its state of being or randomly exude any other property. This can go from light as air to incredibly heavy, moving at impossible speed, secreting poison that melts the hand touching it in 0.1 seconds, ethereal. This takes a body in unison to even begin to process. The differing properties of the pill bug, which change instantly, mean that an individual must concentrate in full unison with every cell in their body in order to be able to juggle the pill bugs completely, and as the Embu rank raises, the user can juggle more and more pill bugs. Though Zebra got to the level he could just eat them, which is very Zebra-like of him. Now while I can delve more into the mechanics, I feel it's time we moved on 
Imbu also further raises one's resistance to any force as all of the cells work together in order to perform a single action against any kind of force. An example of resistance is if the cells work against one another when fighting the force of gravity, the body will feel heavy. But if every cell forms a unified action of warding it off, the power of gravity simply seeps through the body, making the body lighter even against high gravity. But more so, Imbu allows its user to flow around damage similar to knocking Master Jero's knocking him. Now keep all I've said in mind because we're about to get crazy. Earlier I mentioned one crucial thing. Imbu was not created as a battle art. It was a dance of love and friendship between the Monkey King's speech. Bambina taught other monkeys Imbu in hopes of that someone could eventually become his playmate. While on a first look at an unimpressive 150 centimeters or 411, the Monkey King is the smallest of the eight kings, though he's still weighing in at 25 tons. The Monkey King is perhaps the most active of the eight kings, and we have a lot more data to represent him from the series. Bambina is incredibly childlike, shown with his playing of traditional games with the four kings, or even when he casually cuts down and tosses 15 meter long mountains across the oceans at Mach 1 speed. To add perspective, Bambina cuts down and chunks mountains roughly the size of Mount Rushmore and throws them so hard they travel the planet and turn into weathered pebbles from the sheer friction of hitting the water. Living on top of Hunter G Mountain, a mountain with 100 times gravity that of the natural Tariko Earth, which would be roughly 2 times than our own, so 2 times 100, Bambina is capable of jumping from here and traveling 50 kilometers in a second to outer reaches of space. Bambina casually likes to take naps amongst the stars and crashes down to Earth completely unharmed. These feats by themselves are godlike, roughly estimating where Bambino was when he jumped, I'd say he likes to take naps in the planet's thermosphere. A part of the atmosphere reported to have temperatures as high as 1727 degrees Celsius, placing his casual heat resistance beyond the level of the entire periodic table. Bambina crashes a height about 50 miles above sea level and shows no damage. This just like skipping mountains is a part of his day to day life. Unlike the other eight kings with powers like black holes, dimensional lasers, time control, soul sniffing, and casual weather control, Bambina is simply an overall fucking unit. Possibly using the martial arts his species has created as a mating ritual, or possibly the fact that he just com commands all 60 trillion cells in his body to move in harmony. But either way, the results are attacks that can shatter continents and scar planets. During the Four Kings battle, Bambina could move faster than 0.1 seconds. All of his speed, even in this situation, all of his strength, all of his durability was not maxed. Bambina wears a sort of furry membrane over his body, like restrictive bandages. When released, the Monkey King's true power is brought to the front. In his unsealed form, the Monkey King will gradually grow larger and larger and you know his nuts will get bigger even eventually towering over the size of Zebra and possibly having larger nuts than Zebra, but you know, we'll, we'll talk about that later. He also reveals that his true color is solid white. After releasing the Monkey King, uses his tail and launches an attack so dangerous all of the four kings' appetite demons emerge in self-defense. This simple tail slash from Bambina caused a slash effect that reached far from 100G Mountain into space and cut a satellite and asteroid. Again, casually, notice the Monkey King did not touch the planet, so I guess the clause of don't shit where you eat still stands. Most satellites sit around 2,000 kilometers or roughly 1,200 miles outside of Earth. So yes, Bambina's attacks have a 1,000 mile plus range. During his round two with the Heavenly King, they managed to perfectly perform the monkey dance, which I pray we will one day get to see animated. Everything is going well until the final step in the Monkey King's rage unleashes. Here, he tanks the four kings' strongest attack. He can't be eaten by Sunny Satan hair and even bites it, keep in mind this hair was stated to be able to devour planets and even solar systems, and resists Coco's devil poison which can, you know, dope planets, and takes Tariko's jet demon fork which breaks out into space later on in the manga. The Monkey King's ancestors were said to have been able to, like I said earlier, strike a continent and shatter it. That would take an impact of 1.33 to 4.434 petatons of energy. The celestial impact that killed the dinosaurs is speculated at 1.2 petatons. This is further backed by scans when the Monkey King sealed fought a fragment of Neo and it states that Bambina struck the fragment of Neo with blows that hit like meteors. 
the Monkey King's blows can quite literally cause mass extinctions. His defense capabilities are on the same level, if not higher, as he took blows from an awakened Akashia slash Neo, and his speed is night faster than light, as he can dodge Coco's Inbu and Head's mole spears, and like I said, overall, Bambina is just a fucking unit. But that's all for today, folks. Without further ado, let's talk wolves. Today, we journey to Area 2. Area 2 is a chain of continents all surrounding Area 1, and it's home to Akashi's main dish, God. When I say chain of continents, I mean quite literally that Area 2 is comprised of a great many islands that themselves are also massive and unexplored. Presumably, one of the seven great civilizations was once located on this continent, although it is unknown if the civilization still exists. Currently, the only man-made settlement that's known to be active in Area 2 is Neo, headquarters where Joey and the rest of the Neo staff reside. Area 2, also as the video title says, is home to the Battle Wolves, a legendary species of canine that has populated the gourmet world for eons. Our first look at the Battle of Wolf was actually very early on during Toriko, in the Regal Mammoth arc in fact, where we saw Terry's mother and of course, Terry's birth. We also saw that at less than a week old, Terry was easily mashing, analyzing, and evading beasts with capture levels dozens of levels higher than his own, or speculated to be his own, and could run at speeds higher than 60 miles per hour for long distances. Terry was a baby, and his mother was a clone and even their feats are nothing when it compares to a real battle wolf in the wild. It is stated that a massive beast once threatened not only the gourmet world, but also the human world. This gluttonous creature was an herbivore that devoured everything in its path, and there were herds of them. It is said that these huge creatures were in fact obliterated by a single battle wolf, and only later in Toriko do we get to witness the power of an actual battle wolf. Enter the Wolf King Guinness. Guinness is ruler of Area 2 and one of the smaller eight kings in fact. Comes in at 100 meters or 328 feet long and 55 meters high and 20,000 tons. So for scale, Guinness is as tall as the Leaning Tower of Pisa if it was upright and is roughly the length of the Chrysler building. And still, Guinness is a lot smaller than other kings like Daros or Heracles, but to the contrary, Guinness's feats amongst the kings are actually more of the more prevalent. One of the first times we actually get to see Guinness in motion is against Tariko and Stargirl. After the two of them encountered his second in command, they eventually came to blows with Guinness himself, and in their brief scuffle, we get to see how intimidating of a creature Guinness is. Eyes darker than night with small pricks of light within them, he is oddly terrifying and has somewhat of a human-like face, which overall makes it feel like Guinness is staring directly at you. Once the fragment of Neo appeared, one sniff and then he one hit Coyote. And keep in mind, the fragments of Neo all scale similarly, and one that encountered Knocking Master Jiro, who when he attacked, Granny Setsu warned not to strike the planet, and even after being struck by this, the fragment still survived in space. So. Since Guinness once shot at the Area 2 fragment, we can confirm a casual stamp of his paw will be enough to leave out planetary levels of damage. After this, we see he can also cover hundreds of miles in seemingly microseconds after blowing Tariko and Stargirl several miles away from them. And even then, he easily dodged Toriko and Stargirl's attack that had just almost sent a fragment of Mia into space, and the attack he dodged still scarred the planet. Even still, in his debut power, we get to see that amongst all of Guinness's feats, every single thing he does where he strikes the ground causes ripples that deform the Jupiter-sized Tariko planet. This being shown on several occasions, like I just said, and especially towards the end game against Akashia, the force of Guinness's attacks are in general so great that I had to search incredibly hard for a real life example to compare it to. And so with that everyone, sit back as we go a quick 66 million years ago. A giant asteroid 7.5 miles or 12 kilometers across crashed into the ancient shallow seas today covering the Yukon Peninsula with 10 billion times the 
power of the Hiroshima nuclear bomb. Like water ripples when a stone splashes into a pond, the impact rippled the Earth's crust, theorized to have resulted in a crater about 124 miles wide. This asteroid would have punched a cavity into Earth 18.5 miles deep and 62 miles wide, crushing the surface downward and forcing rocks outward. The nearly vertical unsupported sides of the impact crater would have started to collapse inward, possibly leaving out massive explosions and dust clouds twice as high as Mount Everest. And when we look at Guinness strikes on Akasha, it's clear to see that the mushroom clouds and debris are likely a lot bigger than Mount Everest. This is a perfect example, once again, about how Tariko characters are solidly above planetary level and they all just somehow value their planet and don't instantly destroy it. And Guinness's durability also scales similar. Guinness also possessed the unique ability, or I guess trait, that with a single sniff he can analyze and decode all information about something, down to its genetic or atomic level. This can work on water, stones, people, flesh, bugs, it doesn't matter. This effectively will rip the soul out of those affected by it, leaving them in a pale and ghostly white state, and is even strong enough to halt solar system level beings in mid-combat. This knocked out Stargeon, a fragment of Neo, and was even used on Akasha in the final battle, which allowed the rest of the Eight Kings to set up on him. And of course, Guinness commands one of the strongest groups in the gourmet world, the Battle Wolves. On several different panels, we see the Battle Wolves were there in full force at the battle with Akasha, and in my opinion, were defending their home of Area 2. They fought Akasha, the Blue Nitro, and overall aided the battle while in comparison, every other eight kings brood outside of the Deer King and his army on his back came alone. This is a testament, I feel, to the loyalty of the Battle Wolf species. Guinness was unbothered by his pack's movements, and we know he even had a second in command, so it's clear that the Battle Wolves have somewhat of a complex hierarchy, which is why it's even more shocking that Guinness is the only known member of the Eight Kings to have ever taken a member of another species in under his own wing. That being the legendary knocking master Jiro. And as we know, Jiro was killed by Akasha because he didn't go for the head, but anyway. We know Guinness actually truly felt for his adoptive son, because when Jiro sent Vanish from the world, the Wolf King Guinness howled, mourning the loss of his child, and Guinness even remembered during the battle with Akasha, and even after losing a hand or paw, still set up Akasha for the rest of the king's attacks. One of the more featured eight kings, but like all of them, incredibly complex, and we can't even begin to know what he was actually thinking. God in their own right, but area for now, one is located in the middle of Area 2. It is home to the mythical ingredient Center, which makes up Akashi's full course or dirt. Due to the gourmet impact happening here, Area 1 contains the origin of gourmet cells and is the remnant of a supercontinent which all life sprang from. Fun fact about Center is though it's the hors d'oeuvre, it cannot be eaten until all the other pieces of the full course are and once consumed, fully awakens the consumer's gourmet cells in a sort of rebirth. The first king for today is the ruler of Area 1, Daros the Dragon King. And though he lives in the smallest region, Daros is, ironically, one of the largest of the kings. Daros, a single fanged red massive dragon that comes in at 4,000 meters or 2.49 miles long and 80 million metric tons. So massive, in fact, that we never get to see his full body in a single panel. Daros is so big that he can literally cut mountains with his claws, much less pick them up like rocks. For scale, he is roughly half the size of Mount Everest, or three times roughly the size of the Empire State Building. Though we can't confirm exactly which method, Daros is one of the eight kings known to reproduce and have young, as Medora was attacked by one of its spawn in his youth. Though outside of flashbacks, Daros is the only member and representative of his species. With one fame, the Dragon King is said to be able to pierce anything of this world. A single shard of one of its species' teeth, when turned into a dagger by Melk II, can split mountains and still carries the aura of a king, something which helped Komatsu more than once. Daros possesses a said to be extra dimensional laser so fast that even Akashia couldn't bring out Neo fast enough to eat or die. And to give this a little perspective, Neo ate the detonation of a fucking star, aka a miniature Big Bang. 
which the speed of would surpass astronomical levels as that's something that literally jumpstarts universes theoretically. This same laser broke out into space and destroyed massive asteroids that comparatively scaled to the Tarico Earth would be planet killers to our own Earth. Now, the literal definition of extra-dimensional is that it takes place theoretically in a separate space and time than our own or physical reality. My guess is the Darrow's beam can hit opponents inside of the bat zone, and this is evidenced by the A-King's attempt to basically team combo Akasha when he was eaten by the mother snake and sealed inside of the well king's stomach, which is the spirit world. Next up for today is, by the country, not only the largest continent, but home to the largest being on the Perico Earth, Area 4. And once again, though we don't know much about Area 4, we know it was home to Akasha's dessert dish, Earth, an ingredient that is said to possess unmatched sweetness. Earth is said to be found in Area 4's gourmet garden, and owes its unrivaled sugar content from literally draining its nutrients from the earth itself, and additionally is capable of reviving the right leg of one's gourmet cell demon. The ever-watching matriarch of Area 4 is the Eight King known as the Mother Snake. The largest of the Eight Kings, in fact, scaling in at 220,000 kilometers, or roughly 137,000 miles long, and weighing a staggering 15 quadrillion metric tons. The mother snake is so large that it can stretch its body across the planet. Judging from how it consumes its prey and how powerful and empty its stomach is, we can assume the mother snake is a constrictor type snake, not having venom but swallowing its prey while digesting it slowly. Something shown in the manga as there were also ingredients that only existed in space inside of its stomach. Compared to our planet Earth, with a circumference of roughly 41,000 kilometers or 25,000 miles, the mother snake will wrap around our planet five times. This creature, despite its massive size, has a mythical speed. Even the young mother snakes are said to be as fast or faster than a shooting star. A shooting star can move an estimated 30 to 60 kilometers per second, or 120,000 miles per hour, casually, or 156.399 times the speed of sound. But realistically, we know the Snake King is easily faster than light speed as it launched attacks so fast that even Neo could not react to them. The Mother Snake's bite and overall movement speed is reported to be so fast that they tear through the environment and create massive tornadoes in her wake that linger for years. And honestly, I can't explain this. My best guess is if we try to apply logic with it, the mother snake is so big and moves so fast that it literally creates the conditions for a tornado, something I think that is unrelated to the emperor ring phenomena that the kings are also known to cause. What forms a tornado in basic terms is when the cool air inside a storm cell falls as the warm air rises. This creates a change in wind speed that results in a tornado. What I believe is that when the mother snake moves, it quite literally displaces the air around it, and due to its size, the area of effect is massive, leaving behind the massive wind tears known as mother tornadoes. Ironically, the reason not very much is known about Area 4 or the mother snake is because it's said that anyone who comes face to face with a mother snake is dead. She attacks so fast that no being has actually ever been shown in the manga to be able to dodge it. Even Neo, a godlike being, got swallowed up by the mother snake faster than he could react, though of course this wasn't enough to kill him. In this same chapter, however, we see the mother snake is so large that if it were to bind its body, it would be the size of a small planet with a body length of 137,000 miles long and a mass of several quadrillion tons. I guess a fully constricted mother snake is probably bigger than our own universe's Pluto or even our Earth's moon. And we don't get to see a size comparison to the Tariko Earth as the mother lot took place inside the spirit world. This act of the mother lot itself was something the mother snake did in an attempt to lock Neo within the Well King's stomach. Now, an additional thing, we kinda had like two worlds of stomachs going on in this, I guess, counterplay against Akasha, because the mother snake's stomach also contains incredibly strong acids that can melt things literally not of this earth. A fun comparison with the mother snake is Jormir, a Norse deity known as the World Serpent that circled Midgard and bit its own tail. The Norse believed Midgard was an island floating in a vast sea, but comparing it to our Earth, Jormundur would be about 38,000 kilometers or 24,000 miles long. And even this mythical titan is dwarfed by the mother's. The literal scale 
of the eight kings is something that can only take place on a planet bigger than our own. So as you've been seeing, the comparisons by which we could analyze them kinda are absurd. Though once again guys, we find ourselves at the end of another video. While the information on these kings wasn't as prevalent as Guinness or Bambina, the sheer scale and awe of the eight kings is something that will never not be recovered. Continuing where we left off with Daros and the Mother Snake, we lunge back into the Gourmet world. This time, however, I hope you brought your sea legs because we're going to Area 6. Now this video is going to be a bit longer than the last one, as Area 6 has so many nuances about it I had to edit down a lot to just fit the video time. So please, if you don't mind, leave a like, especially if you've been liking the A Kings Explained series. Beginning. Area 6 is the zone of the gourmet world that has third smallest amount of landmass of all the areas, beating only Area 1 and Area 3 in size. Like Area 2, Area 6 is not actually a single continent, but a whole region of ocean that has three smaller continents within. Additionally, Area 6 is also an ingredient, being known as the Stock Sea. The further one goes within the depths of the massive ocean, the tastier the water gets, and each layer can be made into a separate soup. Which is weird, because you know a lot of animals swim around in it, but to Rico logic. The land masses form the Black Triangle, a particular zone of Area 6 that holds a pitch black sea. This possibly a reference to the Bermuda Triangle, and now that I think about it, whatever actually happened with that? The vast sea is said to have swallowed an asteroid the size of the moon, meaning this ocean absorbed the impact of a cosmic event and nothing happened. The moon is roughly one fourth the size of Earth and about as wide as the United States. And for those that think this is an exaggeration, remember, blue shell by itself is stated to be about the size of the United States. If the moon hit the Earth, the collision would break the planet immediately into large fragments. Amongst the planet shattering and the amount of devastation released, there would be the magma released from the Earth's core that would cause an unheard phenomenon. An impact like this would change the literal axis of the Earth and set loose firestorms. Yes, I literally mean storms of fire. And well, none of that happened here because the Black Sea absorbed the impact, though I believe it was Moon who ate the asteroid. Remember, the Eight Kings all possess some sort of danger radar for things that could cause them problems and or threaten their life. I theorize that if an asteroid this large hit even the Tariko Earth, while it wouldn't destroy the planet, it'd certainly reshape or severely damage it. Whatever Eight King that was potentially in the meteor's landing area was likely the one that took care of it as it fell within their territory. Within this vast sea is another one of Akasha's fable full course ingredients. Another perhaps the most important of the full course, another awakens the tongue of one's gourmet cell demon. Unlike what we know about the majority of the full course, another actually has a massive effect on its surrounding environment. Long ago, it was another that created the back channel. When another was attempting to escape the Well King Moon, it was able to move at such speeds that it was able to exceed the speed of light, entering and creating a different plane of existence known as the back channel. Another also needed safety outside of just running from the Whale King, so it found shelter near the Seven Beasts, seven incredibly powerful predators that are second to none but each other and the Whale King moon within Area 6. It additionally hid within the massive mollusk we know as Blue Shell. By proximity, another's alternate space altered the area around all of the organisms that it took refuge with, making them safe zones. So yeah, a singular fish species is responsible for an entirely different dimension. Remember when I said Tariko as a whole is just an evolutionary arms race? Another is one of the hardest dishes in Toriko to prepare, and with a capture level of 8,000 and a cook time of 600,000 years, though thanks to the chef team and mainly Komatsu and a visit from the food spirit, they got it finished in 65 within the back channel. With all of that out of the way, now for the reason that this fish had to reach the speed of light. Perhaps one of the more infamous of the eight kings, the Well King Moon. Rumored to be the mightiest of the eight kings, Moon is the ruler of the oceans of Area 7 and comes in at a whopping 10,000 meters long or 6.21 miles and a 1.5 million metric tons. As always, for scale, Moon is nearly 30 times larger than the world's biggest aircraft carrier and weighs roughly about as much as seven and a half cruise ships. Though I don't know the measurements when it's outside of its asteroid, 
Yeah, by the way, Moon wears an asteroid as a sort of armor, I guess. This asteroid encompasses most of Moon's main body, and the purpose wasn't really known. And after the armor is broken, Moon looks more like a standard, but also roided out blue whale. Like all the kings, we know Moon greatly affects his environment. Its size alone would result in biblical levels of destruction simply for movement on the ocean floor, causing tsunamis, and perhaps this supports the crazy environment within Area 6 such as the Conveyor Belt Islands. As said earlier, Well King Moon is the reason for the open availability of back channel usage in Toruko. That is because in Area 6, a massive ocean spanning most of the gourmet world, Moon reigns as the supreme being by using its ability to literally create black holes. And I do believe that this is more of a species ability as it is called a black hole well, but it does this and consumes everything, even the light around it. This black hole leading to the literal spirit world that is within Moon's stomach, so the amount he can absorb is likely infinite or close to it. How Moon does this, I don't know. It literally defies physics as black holes are formed when massive stars die and their core collapses under the force of gravity. The intense pull of a black hole is so strong that it creates regions of space which nothing can escape, not even light. Black holes theoretically pull with 69 million miles of force and along with the distorted space, nothing can escape the pull of it. This is why the area of the ocean within Area 6, that is the Black Triangle, is pitch dark. Moon literally consumes the light in the area. With what we know, I guess the more accurate way Moon creates black holes is by creating a miniature star and collapsing it. The star creation theory is also supported by the fact that the Crow King can form suns, and Don Slime additionally also form a miniature star. So for a second, let's get experimental. If a black hole opened on Earth, it would immediately, once again, cause destruction. All the matter in the area of the black hole would be sucked inside with greater force than the planet's own gravity. The matter being sucked into it would, in basic terms, superheat, causing the immediate vicinity to become millions of times hotter than the sun. This ability in and of itself puts the scale of not only the eight kings, but the entire planet into perspective. This planet is so large and specialized that it can sustain no notable damage from a black hole being generated. Though with what we know, it's likely the Earth may be protected by food spirits or etc. It's odd Moon was rumored as the strongest, but it's likely because of how powerful its ability is. The other eight kings have to be beings capable of matching or exceeding the feats presented by Moon, which we know by now they can. Every time I go back into this series, I do find a lot of just super crazy facts and comparisons that make me fall in love with Tariko all over again. That being said, Area 6 is one of the most explained areas in the manga, and if you'd like to know more about Area 6 and the Civilization Blue Grill itself, let me know down below in the comments and I'll make a more detailed video on it. Keeping that appetite unsated and the mouths watering, we head back into the gourmet world. Today we'll be detailing two more continents as we keep going over the power of the Eight Kings. First today, we head into Area 3, called by Coco the harshest realm in the gourmet world. One of the smallest land masses, in fact, in the gourmet world next to areas 1 or 6. Area 3 is dubbed the Cloud Continent. We see that there is very little actual ground. The ecosystem even having cloud trees high in the sky, one of which is the location of Biotype Zero and the elite defenders of the Ego or International Gourmet Organization. The reason these clouds exist is because the lower levels of Area 3 sport massive volcanoes capable of reaching space with their eruptions. The ash, in my own theory, form these massive clouds and supply the ecosystems above with nutrients similar to the ozone garden. And Area 3 is in fact home to Akasha's full course drink, Adam. The source of Adam comes from the cloud mountains in Area 3. Adam erupts from the cloud mountain as presumably lava and or molten gourmet material. The eruption reaches into space and while there picks up toxic materials then falls down to earth as the ingredient we know is Adam. Consuming Adam fully awakens the gourmet cells of the torso and head, excluding the heart, tongue, and brain which are awakened by center, another, and God respectively. Now, my theory is that outside of Adam, these toxic chemicals also rain down and poison whatever ground that is actually in Area 3 and leads to it becoming a poisonous region, thus causing life to evolve in the skies. And the ruler of the skies, the master of Area 3, Emperor Crow, Crow King. 
scaling in at 3,000 meters, 1.87 miles long, and 25 million tons, the Emperor Crow is basically the size of a small mountain, and its wingspan is even longer, with the average crow's wingspan being about twice its body length, we can guesstimate that Emperor Crow's wingspan is at least 6k meters. The crow would look down on the Grand Canyon while in it. And for scale, remember one of the MonsterVerse's greatest creatures, King Ghidorah. Yeah, the Crow King is over 18 times the size of Ghidorah, and Ghidorah's movements create a Category 6 hurricane. And I don't know if you guys know, we don't have an official category 6 for hurricanes. The winds the Crow King would generate, I suspect, would be beyond any scale humans can measure them in, and would leave traces similar to the Mudder Snake, although very little is known about the Crow King and the Emperor Crow species itself. But thanks to Kiss, Coco's pet Emperor Crow, we know that a weaker portion of the species once lived in the human world and went extinct, leaving one egg behind that became Kiss. And Kiss shows development and battle IQ on equal level to the other baby kings, Terry and Quentin. And we see the Emperor Crow is capable of spinning itself like a drill and piercing through its target, as well as scattering its plumage to disorient its foe and aid its friends in battle. The Crow King on the larger scale is a bit more broken. With a mile plus long wingspan, the Crow King would create literal hurricanes and windstorms just with his movement. And if that wasn't already devastating, it possesses an occult-like ability that those who enter its shadow experience a trance-like effect where they literally forget existence and, you know, get vaporized. This ability itself isn't really explained, and honestly, I truly have no idea. It took out a fragment of Neo with relative ease, and this ability in theory would be like a god descending from the skies above and blessing the earth with mass extinction. Which is again, why I believe that life evolved in the skies of Area 3, because it's impossible to think that anything could develop on the ground with the Crow King swooping by in his shadow literally destroying everyone. The Crow King's abilities don't even stop there. Like all of the great beasts, he can fire beams of appetite energy, and this extends to being able to create shadows by making miniature suns in his mouth. This would not only allow the Crow King to activate his signature ability anywhere he went, it also shows that this creature, as I've said in previous videos, can create a small star of feet, just like the Whale King and plenty of the other kings I'm sure could reach. Again, I can't... Uh, can't comprehend this honestly, a short flight from the Emperor Crow day or night would kill off millions of organisms within miles. But moving along for now, if you're still watching, congrats, it's the halfway mark in the video, thank you for watching this far, it really helps me out on the algorithm and gets me noticed, and pat yourself on the back for still having a long attention span in this day and age. Next up is Area 5. One of the more mysterious areas that, once again, we know very little about when it comes to its regions, the only real areas we know of were Multi-Gravity Valley, an underwater area of Area 5 where a rare species of leaf fish lives, and the Food Region Forest, the heart of Area 5, and it is in fact where Akashia's dish News dwells. Consuming News fully awakens the gourmet cells of the left leg, and the tasting flavor of news enables one to control the speed of their gourmet cell's cellular division, allowing them to exceed the speed of light, aka allowing them to create and manipulate back channels. News is actually tasteless and can be only experienced if one has eaten another, which awakens the tongue of their gourmet cell demon. The only real thing we know is that news is located directly within the food forest region and is massive. This forest is, like I said, mysterious, with trees that have an odd appearance that make them appear as though they have no surface. The funny thing about this place is it's on the literal back of our next eight king, the second largest of the eight kings and ruler of Area 5, the Deer King, Sky Deer. Sky Deer is a literal gentle giant, coming in at 60,000 meters long or 37.28 miles, 10,000 meters tall or 6.21 miles tall, and weighing 8 trillion tons. Very few other creatures are as large as Sky Deer, and it is nearly a mile taller than Mount Everest. And at a speed of, let's say, 60 miles per hour, it would take you a half hour to travel the length of the Sky Deer's body. Amongst the kings, Sky Deer is considered to actually be the most docile, there being two reasons behind this. One, Sky Deer often rests underground within the food region forest, being on his back and there are countless beasts with capture levels above 4,000. These beasts roam the region around him and alone are so powerful 
they would be continental destroyers unchecked in my opinion. And some seem drawn here, I theorize, because of the presence of news on the Deer King's back. As we've all noticed, each of Akasha's full course ingredients tie directly into the environments they dwell in. Perhaps these dangerous beasts flock here and are allowed to stay because the Deer King's environment offers greater prey and safety, which is why they protect the forest. And two, Sky Deer is actually one of the most vengeful kings when angry. He possesses the manipulation of the back channel on a level unseen throughout Tariko. Back channels are paths torn through reality, essentially, that give access to separate pockets of time and space, and Sky Deer can directly manipulate them. This allows Sky Deer to create isolated prisons where it can freely speed up and slow down the passage of time. This can accelerate individuals' lifespans or even pause time and render them unaffected by the passage of it. Examples of this are when Sky Deer created an isolated space where time was 1,000 years for every one second outside, meaning a minute would be 60,000 years, effectively meaning any non-godlike being being placed in his back channels can kiss their life by, well you know, except one, and could even result in examples of the hyperbolic time chamber, where you could train for years and not be affected by time and outside, only seconds have passed. This ability will quite literally body the vast majority of any anime roster. Name, the speed at which you'd be isolated and start to decay would be unavoidable. This ability may as well be a domain expansion from Jujutsu Kaisen because once you're there, it's gonna be a sure hit and you're gonna get forcibly accelerated to dust. There are also ancient beasts living inside of these isolated back channels that separately from you won't age due to the Deer King's command and they'll tear you apart while you're being aged millions of years a second. But once again everybody said I saved the densest and most fleshed out continent for last. So without further ado, typical YouTuber shtick, like, share, subscribe, and help me make this channel a home for all Tariko fans and more. Now let's get into Area 8. Area 8, also known as the Rain Continent, due to the presence of the Horse King, this continent has a massive variety of constantly shifting weather. Though most of the continent is barren, it has pockets of life scattered throughout, and one of the only remaining gourmet world civilizations, Hex Food World, is located here. The denizens of Hex Food World would be best described as Oni, Trolls, etc., but are actually the descendants of the races once enslaved by the Blue Nitro. Tariko and the group first landed in Area 8 in the Golden Swamp and were forced to retreat under into its depths which reportedly was a maze that twisted and turned for miles. They fled underneath because a steel thunderstorm of feet, yeah feet, fell and these feet don't rise after years thus pushing them further into the labyrinth. As I said earlier, the weather in Area 8 varies on an unbelievable scale. There are sections with massive raindrops called Mega Rain, areas where life prospers with fertilizer rain, though they called it manure rain, areas where calamity hits in the form of meteor rain, there's even soil rain, poison rain, and hail, and one of the most notable, laser rain that is actually light-based. Area 8 also contains countless other areas that have high or low gravity, some areas where there's little to no oxygen, or areas like the heat planet where you will literally dry out at a cellular level in seconds. This area is how Toriko got his first introduction to the gourmet world, where he ultimately fell and had to be rescued by Jiro, as he couldn't keep up with the constant environmental changes. Area 8 is in my opinion, the most fleshed out continent next to Area 7, and we know the environment within it is one of the harshest in the gourmet world requiring mastery of one's cells. It contains the final ingredient to Akasha's full course, the fruit dish air. And air is actually quite abundant in Area 8. As usual, it is also a part of the area's life cycle itself. Air fruits appear to be capable of producing enough oxygen to sustain areas simply by their presence. However, the air tree from which they grow causes the ratio of components in the air to be different from normal. So there can be dense oxygen, carbon monoxide, or carbon dioxide. You could feel fine next to an air tree, and then the next one could suffocate you. Another one might give you oxygen poisoning. Air fruits can only thrive if their trees are properly fertilized by strong energy forces, leading during times of peril for other creatures to sacrifice themselves in order to fuel the air tree. 
trees. When an air fruit matures, obviously it falls from the tree, the largest of which have a circumference of nearly a mile. When they fall, they release large amounts of air which can supply nutrition to herbivores or creatures who basically eat through breathing, such as the horse king and its brood. Again, the largest of the air fruit can release enough oxygen to supply entire planets, and it's actually kind of sad because the blue nitro are the ones who developed the method of harvesting the largest of air before it matured and could benefit the ecosystem. This theft by the blue nitro caused grave effects on not only the ecosystem of Area 8, but even the creatures within it such as the horse king. Because even the horse king couldn't interfere, because if it got too close its very presence would shock the fruit and ruin it. This not only stunted the growth of many of the horse king's children, it directly led to the stagnation of Area 8. When the massive air fruit falls, it's said to create hundreds of rainbows that can be crossed and allow for travel outside of Area 8. And it's at this moment, the Horse King is said to give birth requiring 100 times the normal amount of air, and its young child would tear through the world showcasing its strength and namesake, the Nightmare. The Nitro for thousands of years directly led to interfering with this and the decline of the Nightmare species in Area 8 overall. There's more in regards to Bizarre Food World and its members like Mappy, who was once one of the strongest warriors in the entire region, and his car the Croaks Wagon, but uh, I'll leave that for later. For now, we journey to the final area of Area 8, Nightmare Hill. Home to not just creatures like Zebra's pet Garuma Horse or a cheer used Janus Unicorn, but home to the eighth king and the final of this series, the Nightmare Heracles. The final king is next to Bambina, my favorite, and we got to see a decent showcase of Horse King Heracles, coming in at a staggering 30,000 meters long, or 19 miles, and standing 22,000 meters tall, 14 miles, and weighing 2 trillion metric tons, Heracles is the noble steed of the eight kings and ruler of area eight. For scale, the Horse King is so massive it could stand in the Marianas Trench and look down on Mount Everest, and it is perhaps the largest of the eight kings, and next to Guinness is the only one where we can truly see examples of its power being displayed. Heracles and its brood are known as a phantom species. Mythical in proportion, this species possesses a near immortal healing factor, shown even in an infant Herak, which Elg, who grafted it to himself, could heal from attacks that burn him at cellular levels and rapidly adapt in order to attack. A single breath is said to allow Heracles to fight for an entire month and could sustain it for even longer. And that would be because when Herak takes a full breath, it creates a literal vacuum similar to that of space, a void if you will. In this void, similar to space, it would be devoid of oxygen, much less anything else. It would make areas temperatures very, very cold. The baseline temperature of space is 2.7 kelvins minus 451.81 degrees Fahrenheit, or barely above absolute zero, the temperature at which molecules stop moving. Heracles creates this void as a byproduct of when it inhales, because it inhales 360 billion tons of air in a single breath, in volume an amount on par with the amount of water in the Atlantic Ocean. This is the reason for massive shifts in local air distribution and directly responsible for the extreme weather that occurs in Area 8. Alternatively, with a single exhale, or more like a snort, Heracles cut Tariko in half and makes a nearly mile-wide crater. This king, for the first time, forced Toriko's blue demon to the surface, and it was mainly just because Toriko wasn't ready for the scale of this fight. Additionally, this fight with blue showed us that we'd be forgiven for thinking the horse king is slow. It dodged an attack from the blue oni, and countered with a kick that literally shook the entire continent of Area 8, and as blue states, it would have sent him to outer space if he took the full brunt of the attack. The blue demon was so powerful at the time that it and the horse king formed a giant emperor ring, and we know emperor rings are only formed when the strongest creatures meet in combat. The horse king, when confronted with the mighty blue ogre, simply decided to inhale, turning the entire area into a void and forcing even the blue ogre back into Toriko's body, though Toriko did survive this void. Heracles' attacks cut through the earth itself and never show signs of stopping and it did this on numerous occasions throughout the series. It's shown in the manga that we can call it lucky, Heracles never fired downward at the planet. Its breath is so strong, when it one-shotted a fragment of Neo, the attack reached hundreds of miles away and pierced into Area 7, even clipping the Monkey King who was a stack. Its breath was shown easily destroying the clouds of steel, and the metal of these clouds barely took any damage after being hit by Tariko's leg knife. 
Pericles' breath bores through the earth and creates a hole, and again pierces through and hits Akasha during the battle with the eight kings for God. But Unlike any of the other kings, the truly amazing thing we got to find out is that the horse king is a sheep, maybe a hermaphrodite species, I don't know, they breathe air, it could get weirder, but we got to see Heracles give birth and usher in one of the competitors for the next gourmet world power struggle, the child nightmare Hera, and even this creature giving birth was spectacular. Along with the air arc receiving massive love and in-depth writing, we saw it all tied together in the end for the birth of a new nightmare. The Air Fruit, the Horse King, and Survival of Area 8 were literally all tied together. And I know we have our issues with Shimakuro as a person, but as an author, he created a true masterpiece with the first Gourmet World arcs. And it's a shame they only really explored continents were basically 7, 8, and 1, because each has an ecosystem as symbiotic as Area 8 or even the oceans of Area 6 or also Area 8, because you know you can't access Peril without going for the literal nuts of the Monkey King first. But Wrapping up, if I had to rank the Eight Kings personally, which is kind of impossible considering they're all godlike beings in their own right, I'd put Sky Deer as rank number one. The ability to trap enemies in a separate dimension, use hyperbolic time chamber hacks to get stronger, and employ be strong enough to stand against the other Eight Kings makes it nearly unstoppable in my opinion. Next, I place Well King Moon with the ability to create localized fucking black holes. In short, Anybody not able to achieve a speed faster than light will be torn apart by the event horizon of the black hole. Third, I'd have to say Heracles because it's stated with destroy breath, all living things need air, and outside of Akasha, no being into Rico ever really dodged or tanked its full wrath. And from here, I can't really say. Daryl's has a dimensional laser, Guinness and Bambina hit harder than the asteroids that killed the dinosaurs, the Crow King can incinerate you with shadows, and the Mother Snake, though the largest, could easily be the weakest or the strongest. It's still hard to say, like I said. Let me know, what do you guys think in the comments? Every single one of the eight kings possesses speed, perception, and reactions on a micro scale level. Each could, as I said earlier, likely easily destroy the planet they reside on if not for the bountiful wealth of food that keeps these warlords satisfied. Now, the final god of Toriko, or Toriko, <laughs> will get his own video soon, and that god is Akashia. The guy I've casually mentioned this entire time as he fought these god level beings and won. But for now, thanks for watching the video guys. I really appreciate your continued viewership and support. We're almost at 3,000 subscribers, which is a bit unreal, but help out, leave a like in the video, and click that bell icon to know when we dive back into Toriko. As always, stay sane and stay safe, and we give thanks for the bounty of this universe.